A hot air balloon is rising at a constant speed of 4.9 meters per second. At a height of 80 meters above the ground, a ball is released. Let's ignore the effects of friction. And then 3.1. 3.1.1 write down the acceleration of the ball before it was released right so before the ball was released it's inside the balloon which is moving at a constant speed keyword constant right so if it's moving at a constant speed then we have an acceleration of zero meters per second squared right and then for 3.1.2 uh, write down the acceleration of the ball after it is released after the ball is released from the balloon, now it is in free fall, right? Because gravity is the only force acting on it. So we know fully well that when an object is in free fall, acceleration is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downwards, right? That's the acceleration when an object is in free fall. And then moving to 3.2 and 3.2.1. Let's conclude the position of the ball 0 0.5 seconds after it was released relative to the ground. So we want the position of the ball 0 0.5 seconds after it was released relative to the ground. So let's gather the information we have and see which equation we're going to use, right? Uh, so we know fully well that we're looking for delta y, right? And then what do we have? We have delta t, which is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. And then we also have vi, right? Uh, if we come back here to our equation statement, uh, the hot air balloon was rising at a constant speed of 4.9 meters per second. And then that's when the ball got released, right? So vi of the ball is also 4.9 meters per second upwards, right? Because the balloon was moving upwards. So that's the vi, the initial velocity of the ball after it was released. Let's look at uh, the other information we have. Uh, we always know that acceleration will be 9.8 uh, meters per second squared downwards, right? So now, looking at this information we have, which equation can we use to find delta y? We can obviously say that delta y is equal to vi multiplied by delta t plus a half a delta t squared, right? So what we can do now is to just substitute. What is vi? We can see that vi is 4.9 upwards, right? So let's take up as positive. Take up as positive right so everything that is upwards we're going to put it with a positive sign and things that are downwards we're going to put a negative sign right and then delta t delta t there isn't any of that right time is a scalar we don't have a direction so we just put 0 0.5 and then plus a half acceleration the acceleration is 9.8 but downwards so we have to say minus 9.8 and then multiply by uh, delta t 0 0.5 squared this is going to give us 1.225 meters right uh, we have a positive value so this is going to be upwards right upwards right so let me uh, explain what's going to happen here so the balloon is being dropped at this point right and then what is going to do is going to travel up until it reaches a velocity of zero meters per second and then after that point is going to go down until it strikes the ground right so after 0 0.5 seconds it's 1.225 meters above the point which it was dropped right so now we can say that the height above the ground the height above the ground height above the ground will be equals to the 80 meters, the position at which uh, the ball is being dropped, right? Plus 1.225. The distance it has traveled from the time it was dropped, right? So this is going to give us 81.23 meters, right? So after 0 0.5 seconds, the ball is 81.23 meters above the ground right and then let's move to 3.2.2 so 3.2.2 is saying let's find uh, the time taken by the ball to reach the ground so if we take vi as 
4.9 meters per second delta y will be equals to minus 80 meters the minus sign is because the ball has moved downwards right and we're taking upwards as positive and then we always know what the acceleration is that is 9.8 meters per second squared and then the minus sign is to show the direction uh what else do we have i think that's it and then uh we'll look in for delta t right we're looking for delta t so we can use the equation um delta y is equals to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared but then if we use this equation we're gonna end up with delta t and then delta t squared being unknown and then we will have to solve the quadratic equation and i don't want to do that so what i'm going to do first i'm going to find vf using vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y and then when i'm done with that i'm going to use vf is equals to vi plus a delta t to find the time right but then let's do that first right so <clears throat> vf squared so we have vf squared uh, being equals to vi which is 4.9 squared plus 2 multiplied by acceleration acceleration is minus 9.8 and then we have delta y which is minus 80 right so what we're going to do from here we're going to take square roots on both sides right so 4.9 squared plus 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 80 and then close bracket everything to the power a half that's the same as taking a square root right and then if you compute that you're gonna get 39.9 meters per second uh downwards right downwards so we know that if we are to use this value again we have to put a negative sign right so now i have vf i can then say that uh, vf is equals to vi plus a delta t what is vf vf is minus 39.9 and then what is vi vi is 4.9 and then plus a which is minus 9.8 multiplied by delta t so we'll uh, we can see that delta t is going to be equal to minus 39.9 minus 4.9 everything divided by minus 9.8 right and then this will be equal to 4.57 seconds right so that's the time taken by the ball to reach the ground then now moving to 3.8 three let's sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of the ball from the instant it is released until it reaches the ground so let's go ahead and you know sketch our axis so that you know we can have a bit of clarity so there goes our y-axis and then there goes our x-axis right so now we have something of this manner then on the x we know that we need the time and then on the y we need a velocity in meters per second right uh we're supposed to indicate the initial velocity of the ball so let's go ahead and put that we know that we started 4.9 right we're still taking up as positive right yeah i tend to just keep one direction i don't change the direction in the middle of uh, the equation so i have 4.9 uh as our initial velocity what else do we need we need to indicate the time for the entire motion right so from 4.9 we reach a maximum height where the velocity is zero right so we come somewhere here and then from there on the velocity of the ball starts increasing as the ball goes downwards right uh so we end up hitting the ground at some point here right we know the velocity uh at which we hit the ground that is minus 39.9 so here we're supposed to have minus 39.9 right and then the time it takes uh is 4.57 right so we're supposed to have 4.57 there and then just like that i think we have essentially uh solved all our problems we just have to 